What's up guys, welcome back to the video. Today I'm gonna to show you how to activate your PS4 account with the PSN activation on firmware 9.00. So guys, the things I'm gonna cover this video is number one, how to PSN activate your PS4 user on 9.00. Number two, how to extract a PSN ID from an official PS4 that you're using, maybe a second one. Number three, how to generate a PSN ID if you do not have an official one. Number four, how to backup and restore games once your PSN activated. Number five, you might have a PSN ID officially already, but you do not know what it is, or you don't have your PSN ID handy because you don't have a PS4 signed in. So there are two different methods to go ahead and extract that. That's from the browser as well as a Python script. So we're gonna look into that as well. So guys, in this particular scenario over here, as you can see, I do have my PSN ID officially activated already. So this PS4 has been used regularly before the 9.00 jailbreak. As you can see, I am a PSN Plus subscriber and I do have two other accounts over here as well. So guys, you will be able to know if an account is activated based on the little options icon you get on the bottom. You click on the options and it, so it does show you if you want to appear offline or actually log in online. So this is how you know that a PSN account is activated on your PS4. While if you look over here, I did create this as a test user just for this video. And guys, as you can see, there is no options button over here in order to go ahead and log in online or offline, etc. So I'm going to log into my official account right now. So guys, I'm in my official account right now. And if I go to settings over here, and I'll be able to access these menus like application save data management and save data in the system storage. If I go here and I click on copy to USB storage device, it does give me the options to go ahead and choose which one I want to go ahead and transfer into my USB pen drive. Like for example, I'm going to go ahead and select multiple applications, choose this, choose this, and, and let's choose this. I click on copy and as you guys can see, I'm able to do this even though I'm not on the latest firmware, just because my account is already PSN activated officially. And that's about it, guys. My game saves are now being backed up into my pen drive, and I can go and restore that anytime I want. And that's the best part of having a PSN activated account. So you can go and back up your game saves occasionally or often as you like, so that you will never ever lose your game progresses. And now I'm going to log into the test user, the one I created just for the test purpose of this particular video. I'm going to open this up. So after creating this account, I did play a little bit of Cold War, so there should be one game safe for this particular one. And guys, uh, quickly to address this, I did, get, I did get a lot of comments asking, hey, how do you have Cold War and how do you have these online games that you have to play online uh, on a jailbroken PS4? I just want to mention, these games have been purchased from day one. Uh, it is not downloaded. I'm pretty sure it's now available. As mentioned, guys, my PS4 was used officially uh, with games that I bought with the PSN subscription, etc. before the 9.00 jailbreak dropped. So that's how I do have all these games even before it was dumped. All right, so let's go to settings now. And if you go down to application save data management, as you guys can see, I'm going to go to save data and system storage. I'm going to do the same thing. Copy to USB storage device. And now it's asking to connect to the internet because it's asking me to update. And as you see, it does not let me go ahead and do it. Because guys, this is not PSN activated and this is one of the downfalls of not having a PSN activated account. So once you're PSN activated, you'll be able to go ahead and utilize this. With that mentioned guys, let's go and activate this out. All right, let's jump into the system. I'm gonna show you what the requirements are and then we're gonna proceed from there. All right guys, so I did initially make this video with the PC version mentioned and it is kind of a little bit of an extra process where you need to have a PC in order to go and get it done. But guys, even before I could post the video, there was an update and SG actually released his online web activator. So it's making this process so much easier. And I want to go and cover this first. And if you guys still want to do it from the PC, I'm going to leave that in the second part of the video, guys. But however, most of the people wouldn't really need that when you can just do it straight from your PS4. So first things first, let's go and jailbreak the PS4 first. So thanks to developer Chameleon, he did go and update a lot of things here. There's Golden 2.0B, which is what we were using. But now there's version 2.0B2. So I'm going to go ahead and load this one up here, guys. I'm going to click on yes. Okay, insert the USB. Perfect. Click on okay. 
and we have golden 2.0 b2 loaded up guys so this is how we normally jailbreak your ps4 this is how the process goes but here is what we're going to do differently guys we're going to open up the internet browser hold the circle button so you don't automatically load what you want to load but we're going to go ahead and enter this website in so let's go here and i'm going to mention this link in the description guys as always so sg did go ahead and update this just a while back so you guys are going to be doing this on a much easier level than most people who've already done it. This website is a little bit of type, guys, but I'm going to leave this link in the description. Go and check it out. SG has updated this even for 9.00. So you have 9.00, 7.50 to 7.55, 7.02 and 6.72. So let's go to 9.00, which is what we need. And good thing like the 7.55, we don't have to go and jailbreak it every single time, guys. So we did have this going through. There we go, guys. This is basically what we see also on the system side. The same software that we have. So four different accounts have all been loaded up over here. Now, I've, I'm going to go ahead and explain all of this in detail in the video I initially shot. But guys, here we go. It's If it's all zeros, that means it's not PSN ID activated. Just go ahead and click the username and it should go ahead and randomly generate one for you. So I'm going to click this and you can, as you, every time you click it, it's going to randomly generate one for you. So you don't even have to go through the process of trying to generate one for yourself. And this is as simple as SG has made it. So hats off to him. Once you just choose which one you want, which is not really much of a choosing, just randomly click one and click on set and activate. That's it, guys. As simple as that, your ID is now set and you're good to go. Now, I will leave the sections as mentioned about how to go and transfer game saves, etc. So you can go and sec check that in the rest of the video, guys. I hope you enjoy this. All right, guys, so here we are in the system right now. We have a few links to go ahead and download stuff from. So this is the PS4 offline account activator that's been updated for 9.00. I will leave the link in the description as always, guys. Uh, go down to this particular thing, click on code, and click on download zip. So once you download the zip file, guys, you can go and extract it. I have extracted it, and this is the contents of the folder. This is what we're going to be using for this video. So guys, moving on to how to extract your PSN ID from a different PS4. Um, this is pretty much the same steps guys. Let's just assume that this particular account is your official PS4. Let's just say it's a PS4 Pro or Slim or Fat that you have somewhere else. Plug in the pen drive. All you got to do is go ahead and back up one of these game saves. Once you back up these game saves, then you're going to have these game saves on your pen drive and you'll be able to get your PSN ID from that pen drive. And I'm going to show you that in just a bit, but this is what you guys got to do. Plug in your pen drive into your official PS4 and then back up one of these game saves. And that is going to help you get your PSN ID. And I'm going to show you that in just a second. I've already done this a, a few minutes ago, so I'm going to use that as an example. So let's jump back into the system. So guys, this is the pen drive I was using on the PS4. As you can see, it did create a PS4 folder and save data. And then that's it, guys. So I did back up three different games over here. These are the game CUSA numbers. If I go back to save data, what you see here is the PSN ID of my PSN account. So this is what you're looking for, guys. A 16-digit hexadecimal. This is your PSN ID. So this is how you go ahead and extract your PSN ID from an official PS4 that you have. Once you go ahead and back up your save data, this is going to be your PSN ID. You can just copy it and keep it handy when you want to activate your jailbroken PS4. So now moving on to if you do not have a PSN ID, but you want to go ahead and generate one just for the sake of this, just as, just for the sake of being PSN activated, you don't really care about having a specific PSN ID. So guys, this website is going to be a lifesaver for you. I'm going to leave this link in the description as well. All you got to do is come here, choose how many PSN IDs you want to create. It's going to be one. So that's about it. And change this to 16 because the 16 digit code. And that's about it, guys. Click on generate hex and you're good to go. Randomly generated hexadecimal for 16 characters. This should go ahead and help you activate your PSN account. It's going to be a fake PSN account, but it's going to work for you. And you can keep generating as as random as you want guys and you can use any one of this i'm going to copy it i'm going to paste it over here and this is what i'm going to use so i want to keep this aside okay let's open up this account activator so guys there is one little concern over here it is not the same method as we always used to do before um Unfortunately, Golden does have some issues with the PSN activator. So we need to go ahead and do it such a way that the Golden is not activated. So first, go ahead and connect to your network. I am traveling right now, so I need to go and set it up with a different connection. 
And also guys, make sure you take your PS4's IP address down and keep a note of that because that will be needed in just a bit. Okay, so now that we've done this guys, so I'm gonna go and fire up Chameleon's host, but I do notice that it's been updated. So I'm gonna delete cookies and clear website data. So I'm gonna get the latest updated one right now. Of course, the very first time you launch it, it's gonna go ahead and cache it real quick. So guys, uh, the whole point of this particular activation for the PS4 account is Golden does have a little issue with it. So we're not gonna load Gold Hen. We're gonna go straight to PS4 debug, which is a very important tool to go ahead and have the PS4 activation done. Make sure there's nothing, no USBs plugged in, no pen drives plugged in, no controllers plugged in. Also, we're gonna go ahead and click on PS4 debug directly. So let's go and click this. All right, so plugging in the USB now, waiting for the error message. And there we go guys, PS4 debug has now been loaded, which has been ported by Kero, so thanks to Kero for that. I'm gonna unplug my USB now because we don't wanna keep it in there. All right guys, so now that we have PS4 debug loading, if you wanna recheck your PS4's IP address, go down to network, go click on view connection status. You should be able to see your PS4's IP address over here, so keep note of that. Now we're gonna go ahead and jump back into the PC. So now that we're in the PC guys, go ahead and put your PS4's IP address here first, because that's the important thing. So in my case, it was 192.168.225.67. Okay, so once you have your IP address in, guys, what you're gonna do is click on connect. There you go. You can see this changes over here, connected to this, my PS4's IP address is over here. Click on get users. So when I click on get users, um, as you notice, I did have one, two, three, four different users, three official and one unactivated. So click on get users. There you go, guys. As you guys can see, the usernames are loaded up over here. At the same time, this is a test user that I created for this particular video. And it also does show you the PS4's PSN IDs mentioned right over here, guys. So this is like, let me let me re-verify this. You can go and extract your PSN ID from your PS4 using just the game save. So I just did that a while back. Let me go to the pen drive, open up the PS4, save data. And guys, there you go, it is practically the same thing. 7E434ACD2FA2FB3A. So that's how you go and extract it, guys. So this is just a confirmation that it is exactly the same one. So now moving on to activating it. So when it's not PSN activated, guys, this is how you're gonna see it. It's gonna be all zeros, which just mean that it's not PSN activated. So in order to go ahead and just activate it, we're just gonna go for, we're gonna take a randomly generated one from the website. I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna go ahead and paste it over here. Once you paste it, guys, for test user, click on set ID and activate. There you go, account ID set and activated. Click get users to verify it was written properly. So let's go and click on get users again. And this time it should not be all zeros. And it should capitalize itself. So just to just like this guy. So now I have four accounts and all of them are PSN activated. Now let's just go and see how this looks on the PS4. All right guys, so on the PS4, please do note that you will have to restart your PS4 once for it to take effect. I'm just gonna show you uh, the difference. There you go, guys. Test user is now PSN activated. You can see the options menu. You can see the test user is now in italics. Let's click this and you can see login with online status, online, up your offline and up your online, which we didn't have before. But as mentioned, guys, you will not be able to go ahead and utilize the functions unless you restart your PS4. But let's just confirm application save data management. Let's just go here. Copy the USB storage device. Okay, it says it's not connected. Let's go and connect it and see if it works right off. Okay guys, I just plugged in the USB pen drive. Let's go to settings again. Data management, save data and system storage. Copy the USB storage device and it asks you to update. Let's click on update later. Looks like it's not really working. That's because you need to restart your PS4 guys. So let's do that. Let me go and restart the PS4 once for the effect. So let's do that and let's come right back in. Okay, so we are logged back in. Let's go to test user. Let's go for the same stuff. Copy the USB storage device. And there you go, guys. As I mentioned, I just played this one game, so I'm gonna click this. And that's about it. Go ahead and click on copy. And you're golden, guys. So this is how you go ahead and back up your game saves. And if you wanna restore it, all you gotta do is go to application save data management again. But instead of the first option, go down to save data on the USB storage device. Click that, and you should be able to see two options here. Copy the system storage and it's gonna show you which game saves is on the USB device. Click that and you can restore it on back to your PS4.
So guys, that's as simple as it is. Once you have PSN activated, you will be able to go ahead and transfer game saves back and forth. But now that comes with a little limitation over here, guys, and I'm gonna show you exactly what I mean. If you remember, I did backup three different games on the same pen drive, and I go down to application save data management. I wanna see save data on the pen drive, and but it's only showing me one game over here. Funny enough, I'm gonna go log out of this one. I'm gonna log back into my official account. Go down to application, save data management, save data USB storage device. But if you notice, I have three different games over here, but here is the limitation. Every game save comes bundled with the PSN ID that it was associated to. These game saves guys are associated to my official Sam Daniel account, not the test user ID or the fake one we just did. So it does not really show up over there. However, to go ahead and tackle this issue guys, you do have ways to go ahead and do that. If you go back here, as I mentioned, this is my official account ID. I can just copy this, paste it over here, and that's how I transfer all these game saves from here into this one over here. So guys, to put it simple, I do have my Sam Daniel account 2020. It's already PSN activated. I already have some game saves over here. Let's just say that I wanna copy these game saves out and use it, transfer to this different user. And this is how you do it, guys. However, there is another thing that's a limitations that you know you will not be able to go ahead and transfer game saves from a higher firmware to a lower firmware. It's always from a lower that can go to a higher firmware. For example, if you take a game save from 9.00, you will not be able to go ahead and install it on a firmware below 9.00. It's just not gonna work that way. To tackle this, guys, you do have a save mounter, which is also now ported over to 9.00, which is a tutorial I'm gonna work on as well and post it for you guys. So guys, for now, this is about it, as simple as that is. This is how you go ahead and PSN activate your user accounts and transfer your game saves, back it up to your USB, restore it from your USB. Now coming to the final thing over here, guys, coming to the final part of the video, guys, it is a little bit of a complication, but I made it as simple and easy as possible. I don't wanna drag this video too long, so I'm gonna link this part to another video I've done before. It's a master tutorial, which does cover all the different topics, including the ones I was gonna talk about, that retrieving a PSID from a browser and also retrieving a PSID using a Python script. So I have covered this in this particular video, guys, from the time frame of 10 minutes, all the way to 13 minutes for the browser version and from 13 minutes all the way to 16 minutes on how to go and get it done with the Python method. Now these methods are a little bit complicated but guys I made it as simple as possible so definitely go check this one out. I will leave this link in the description as well so you guys can go and refer to it to go and get this done if at all you need to do this particular method. So guys that's about it for this particular video. I hope you found this video helpful. Let me know in the comments uh, if you have any questions about this and the next tutorial I'm going to be posting is remote package installer and likewise I'm going to go and update any other all the other tutorials and all the tools that's important for 9.00 jailbreak well i hope you're having a great time with 9.00 jailbreak guys i hope you're having a great week and i will see you guys in the next video cheers and happy gaming guys until next time bye bye